What's up, everybody? I'm here with the esteemed Dr. Johannes, the king of East African anthropology and global oh, anthropology. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you How's are, <laughs> you are a, a pillar of knowledge, and we just always absorb knowledge from you. And I think you, you deserve your due respect and station in life. Thank you. Yeah. And you dress like black Indiana Jones, which is why. No. <laughs> India Dungeon so fake. Me, I'm a real archaeologist, so <laughs> don't compare me with the fake guy. Is is was he the inspiration? But I know, but why do I know him? I met him. You met you met the real Indiana Jones? Yeah, yeah I met him. Wait, are you serious? He's in Washington DC at the Hilton, yes. Like randomly, like you were just like randomly uh, I, I wrote him a letter a year ago. Telling him I that he was fake and he needed no, to no, stop no, no, making no. movies. If I can write him a better a better script about the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, but his guys, they said, no, it's a fiction. What we are doing is a fiction movie, not a real archaeology. So as an archaeologist, do you believe that the Ark of the Covenant actually exists? That Solomon's son brought back the, the, wait one second. Just, if you want to speak closer into the mic, no, so. Don't worry, I'm there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm there. Yeah, let me move it closer. I'm going to cut this out. So sit, 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 relax like you're good. No, I, I cannot talk without That's moving. That's perfect. <laughs> no, now you can move, but it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be because your range of motion is is. Yeah. So I asked you, do you think the Ark of the Covenant is actually like an, a real archaeological artifact, or was it just based in history? Because I know it's buried somewhere in Ethiopia, and they guard it. But has anybody actually like lifted the lifted the the tomb or, or, or whatever's behind the exhibit to see if it's actually there? No, uh, it's a long story. It's not something we, we got time, doctor. Yeah, no, it's a long story. What, I, what I'm trying to say is it's not something we talk about fiction, mythology, and realistically, the existence of the ark. However, we excavated in Aksum, and I know the site. And one of my colleagues, Professor Zagler from Germany, he identified a spot where the first rest place of the Ark of the Covenant. Okay. So we have that kind of factors associated with a lot of potteries uh, that are uh, sc sacrifice stones, incense burners. All these are pretty much a Jewish culture, I and see. we have it associated there. On the other hand, uh, there is a story that the Ark was destroyed during the destruction of the Second Temple of uh, King Solomon by the Romans. So, some say it is burned there, some say it is in Egypt, some say it's in Armenia. But the only country that claims the custodian of the, the Ark is Ethiopia. So since the 6th century, Ethiopian has been told about it. So there is a church and there is a special place, a kind of turret, a praying place for the Ark. And the ark is kept by a keeper. Every ten years, they change the keeper. That man, that man, once he's there, he's a he's a hermit. He don't move anywhere. Every he's hour, he's celibate. He doesn't. Yeah, he's like a monk. He's not. Yeah, he is a monk. So he doesn't go out anywhere. He may go out for a fresh air, mm -hmm. but he lives in in such a place. Like seclusion with the covenant. Is the covenant is okay. and. Every hour he does a praying, he does the incense, you know, the blessings. Yeah. And people in thousands, they come and try to know what it is. So what's this, the covenant itself? What kind of object is it? Like, is it, is like a, is it a, a vase? Is it like No, a, no, no. It is a stone from the Sinai mountain written by God and give it to, given to Moses. That's how the story is. Okay. Even Moses... Uh, he got it from God and he was angry when he came back from the Mount Sinai. His people became pagans and they were worshiping the calf, right? The calf, something like that. Even he broke it, but he didn't broke. So the ark keep itself, survive itself. That's what they say. If you expose the ark, it will bring some kind of catastrophe. So it's a oh, scared. So, so Everyone is scared not to touch it, to not to expose it and so on. So if you, let's say they the ark was stolen, like the end of the world could happen or something Something, like something can something, happen. Yeah. You see, there was a war between the Ethiopian Muslims and Christians in the, in, the, in the 15th century. 
and the ark was moved from one place to another place but Training no one happened. was able to capture it oh. all the europeans for six since the 16th century especially the freemasons they believe that the ark belongs to them and they were hunting and they came all the way to ethiopia to hunt and see that they went to lalibala they went to axu but nobody was trying to touch it because that's the story what happened in mount sinai is still placed in the human psychic so they're scared of the curse of the ark of the covenant something like that wow so because that's going back to indiana jones the whole movie was about finding the ark of the covenant yeah okay that is very interesting so uh, I want to talk about Ethiopian Christianity, right? Yeah. And we know that Christianity spread from the Holy Land, from Israel, so Palestine, that that region. What, 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 Palestine. Palestine. Yeah. Um, and it spread to, to Ethiopia. And people say Ethiopians have the most pure form of Christianity as taught to the disciples. How do you feel about that statement? Well, uh, the issue is, what's Christianity? Christianity before it became a state religion by the Romans. It was just after the birth of Christ. Even Christ didn't declare that it's Christianity. His apostles, his followers are the one who wrote all kinds of history, praying books, and they revived Christianity. The Romans took that and they made a Christian state, what we call the Roman Christians. So they, insti- they made it an institutional religion. Yeah. yeah. The moment it became an institutional religion, uh, they just created all kinds of uh, unrelated stories on their Christianity. Mm-hmm. But in the first form of the Christianity, all of them were Christians. Yeah. And in the second century AD, Christians, which is Syria, Armenia, Palestine, Egypt, and Ethiopian. So these countries were fully the first, converted, yeah. converted to and Christianity. And the Roman Empire. Yeah. An imp- they, they get gathered in Cyprus, in Greece, and they start to talk about Christ. Who is Christ? Who is Christ? Some says Christ is the Son of God, but God himself. He came to clean our sin from whatever happened from Adam. Yeah. That's the first thing what they say. Therefore, one of the group, they said, yes, Christ was born from a human being, from Mary. So he has a human character. He lived like a human being. He ate like a human being. He died like a human being, even though he was resurrected. However, he is dual, a human and a God. Like a demigod. Yeah. These dualists are called Catholics. Kato means dual. Okay. Human, and that's what the Catholics are. That's oh. what the empire is. That's what the European world, the white world, accepted as a religion. Is that Jesus was for, both God and, and man. Yeah, man. Merged together. Yeah. And then what did the other world, the Orthodox the world Ethi- say? The Orthodox Church, like the Armenian, the Egyptian, the, the Greeks, and the Ethiopians, they said, yeah, Jesus was born from a woman in promising to bring peace and to clean our sin from Mary. But he's the son of God and his God is himself. These are called orthos. Ortho means one, united, one God. So there is there was a war, a lot of issues between the Orthodox world and the Catholic world. The Catholic is an Orthodox world. They are monotheists. They believe in in the Son, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. Yeah. These are united in one. The Catholic world they believe that human is human, one part, and the other part is God. So the Catholic world they used it too much to spread the entire history of Jesus Christ in art, in paintings, all this Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, all this were engaged in doing that. So it became a state religion, and the religion was spread with the help of the, the empire. In Ethiopia, it was not a state religion for some times. Eventually, the, the state captured it, 
And How did we, that? What we what what did what did Ethiopians practice before uh, the, 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 Christ? Well, Ethiopians are multinationals. Yeah. Therefore, some are uh, how do you call it? animists? Animists. Yeah. Some are Muslims and some are Christians. Before, but at Christ, that time we didn't. No, there wasn't Islam. Yeah. Be, yeah. 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 Before Christ, uh, the state and the majority of the northern Ethiopia, they are they are they are they are they are in Judaism or in Old Testament. Okay. So the Ethiopian Orthodox Church claims that. Ethiopia was a Christian country even before the birth of Christ. Analogically, it means there was a lot of stories told about the coming of Christ in the Old Testament. They call him the Messiah. So Jesus Christ is considered as a pure Messiah by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Okay. That's how it is. So they're basically saying that we've always been in a Semitic, in, a, in, in some sort, in, um, in the Semitic tradition. Um, pretty much so. Yeah, going back to uh, Abraham's teachings and then yeah, so, yeah. so on and so forth. And it's interesting that, you know... So Ethiopia is the only Judeo-Christian country among all the Christian states. Yeah, because they, they transitioned from Judaism yeah, they transitioned to Christianity. Yeah, they and they believe that uh, Jesus Christ is the authentic Messiah. So why is Ethiopia, you know, you can even include Eritrea because historically Eritrea was a part of Ethiopia. So that whole region... No, it is Ethiopia. It's not a part of Ethiopia. It is Ethiopia. There is a political issue. Yeah. But it is Ethiopia. You can call that Eritrea is an independent state today. Mm -hmm. But the entire history of Christianity is it's called in Tigray region, which is now Eritrea as well. It was part of Tigray. Yeah, the northern region. The northern region. So why, why was this area so unique? Because I look at, you know, I'm Sudanese. Everyone knows that. But um, Sudan had a very different history, especially with like... You know, you guys had like the Jewish tradition. I don't think we ever really had a Jewish tradition. You, you, you do have. You, you have to know the history of. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Teach me, because uh, no, I don't no. know. <laughs> the, you see, there's the, uh, you know, a part of uh, how do you call, in Sudan, how do you call the border of Sudan and Ethiopia? Oh, the um, town. Kassala, Gadaharif. Uh, no, Gadaharif Kassala. Yeah. Was a part of the Ethiopian. Yeah. And uh, Christianity was there. Yeah. Yeah. In fact. Uh, there was a Jewish uprising, and the Christian Ethiopians came and saved the Sudanese Christians there. Oh. Before the rise of Islam, part of part of uh, the north part uh, the, on the border, it was part of the Aksumite Kingdom. So it's part of Ethiopia. So, so just that region. But I'm I'm curious more of like a deep in Sudan, you know, like the northern, the Nile Valley area. Well, uh, this is the the the. the, the uh, the Nile Valley area, you see, that is the oldest uh, archaeological site we have. In the world? Uh, in, uh, yeah, in, in, uh, there is a reference for that. Okay. Not in Stone Age, after Stone Age, in Bronze Age, in Iron Age, along the Nile Valley, there was a great civilization. So there was a community along the, from the Ethiopian Nile mainly in uh, Sudanese Nile. So the White Nile? Uh, no, the, the, Blue the, two, Nile. the two Niles together, okay. they are called the Nile. So the white comes from the southern Ethiopia and move. Yeah. But, and the other White Nile comes from Uganda, right? Uganda yeah. and gets in. But there is a tributary of the, the Baro River that comes and join the Nile. Nile is formed from the Nile of Ethiopia, the Blue Nile. Yeah from Omo River and from, uh, uh, no, for, from Baro River and from the Nile, the White Nile of Uganda. Three major tributaries. On the other hand, there is the north part, what we call the, Atra, the Atbara. Atbara River, yeah. Yeah, river. That, that comes from Ethiopia as well. Ethiopia is a mountainous country. And it has a huge water base within the mountains. Yeah. That's how the world... Is that from like snow in the winter time or... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like ice that melts. Uh, is... the, 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 yeah, there, there, there are ice. Uh, ice. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so the historic period of Sudan, uh, it is the oldest, uh, uh, what we call today the Egyptian culture, but... The oldest pyramids are in Sudan than in Egypt. So the Nubians, the Nubians predated are, the Egyptian system. Predated the Egyptian system, and they have all kinds of pyramids. Now, what we call the South Sudan, it is full of pyramids. 
Oh, in like those, South Sudan. Like the South Sudan. We never hear about those. Not only those. the north. Yeah. Not only the north. Those are typical. You see, the Nile crosses the north and the south. Yeah. In the south, there are a lot of pyramids along the Nile. So are they still intact and like, or are they just like uh, the base? Because you're an archaeologist, you can tell yeah, if there's a pyramid we, we, there, we, even I, if it's I, not I, there. I, I talked to the president of uh, Sudan uh, once uh, South Sudan was formed. Yeah. And I told him that we have to save the heritage. He said, bring a project. But it was difficult. Everything was very difficult because it was at scratch level they start a new government in South Sudan in Juba. Yeah. Otherwise, the Sudanese archaeology, the Paleolithic, the Neolithic age is one of the tremendous archaeological evidences in South Sudan, both in North Sudan. So, uh, the very north, what you see are mixed up with Arabs. Yeah. But the actual Nubians are the South. Oh, so you think the South Sudanese and Neolithic, Neolithic, Neolithic Nubians, people. yeah. Oh, so... Those are the most sedentary people yeah. who never moved from the same place over 20,000 years. Wow. They lived in the same place. The Northern Sudanese are a mixture of Ethiopians, a mixture of Arab... Turkish, so Turkish Armenian, stuff the, like the, that, the, yeah. The, Ottoman Empire has some influence on it. Even the British. Yeah. The, there's a lot of impact on that. That is that is a, a interesting perspective. And yeah. so I guess because I know people, the Nubian identity is very contested, you know, because most people who claim that they're Nubians are, are always northerners in Sudan. But I guess the, the southerners, they usually call them, they just go by their tribes, their Denka, Nuer. Um, well, but, uh, but that's a recent colonial. I think history. so. Yeah. I- identity is always shifting. Yeah. But yeah. The, we, we are talking about the authenticity of human settlement. Yeah. You know, if you ask the Europeans, they may claim that the entire Egyptian civilization is a Roman civilization, a Greek civilization. Because they say the, the origins of the civilization. Yeah. Or a Persian. I heard there's also, a consp- I don't want to call it a conspiracy, but there's an idea that that the Persians moved to Rome and the, the Roman the Roman family, the Roman yeah. emperor is actually Persian. A yeah, Persian. Well, humans are mixed up. Yeah. They, 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 there is no such pure race the last three, four, five thousand years. Yeah. Humans are moving. And they are, they are exchanging weapons, they are exchanging slaves, they are exchanging gifts. Everything happens throughout the history. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say your admixture is genetically um, as like a typical Ethiopian? What do you think the, the influences are? Because we talked about Sudan, probably have Arab, Turkish. Um, no, you know, several, more, several. several. Well, e- e- Ethiopia has uh, never been see, colonized too. Uh, well, that's one of the history. But the most important thing is when you talk about the ethnogenesis of humans, you have to say the human origin. So Ethiopia is the land of human origins. What do we mean? All humans are evolved from Ethiopia. That's what the fossil evidence shows. Lucy, right? From Lucy, Lucy, older than Lucy, younger than Lucy. And the first migration is from Ethiopia to Sudan to uh, to Egypt. Okay. Some came to Sudan. They followed the Nile. They followed the Nile. Some go to Egypt. Uh, the other Ethiopians, they went across the sea, the Red Sea, to Yemen. Mm. And some Ethiopians from Yemen, they went and advanced to Australia. Then some humans of Ethiopian origin, they went all the way to uh, Russia, to Siberia. So the first so, Russians were black? Uh, it's not a matter of black and white. Black yeah. and white is, uh, it's a, our color texture is a result of a protein and a climate. So protein and climate changes your color, it dye your color. So if we, let's say I were to move to Antarctica, 2,000 years, my kids would be... White. White. In, fa- in fact, probably yellow. Wow. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, if you, if, if you see a lot of... Uh, so that, that, that has an impact. Diet has an impact. Uh, you know, our genetic system has so many impacts gradually. Yeah. If you see the first African-Americans who arrived in America, they're much, much, much darker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but do you think... Much, but in 400 years, yeah. because of the diet, because of the climate, there is a lot of change. Yeah. Then the intermarriage, the rape. I, think, I always thought it was more because of that, because of the, the genetic mixing of, of the European bloodlines and the African bloodlines, that that's why you looked... You know, the, 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 that's the, why they look habesha sometimes, you know? No, 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 no. no. Uh, it... it, it <laughs> You see, what we call homo erectus or homo habilis or homo sapiens, 
These are the early humans who are from Africa, East Africa, or along the Rift Valley of Africa. Yeah. So those are the ones who spread out around the world. So what happened in the 8th century, 7th century, 1st century AD, even 2,000 years back? There was a trade route. There were empires, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans. Then on the other side of the sea, there were the Egyptians and the Ethiopians. So the Ethiopians and the Greeks were trading each other. Oh. You'll see hundreds and thousands of gold coins of the Greeks in Ethiopia. Yeah. And we have hundreds and thousands of Ethiopian gold coins in Greece. So wow. it is just a trade movement. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that the, the instrument, the it's called a lyre in English. I don't know. It's like the large harp and you they pick at it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. But apparently that's originally a Greek instrument. That was brought. That's what I heard on on, on this possible. That was brought to East Africa and it died out in in Europe, but it was still used in like even in Sudan and and, and Ethiopia and Eritrea. Um, well, you see, uh, every culture has its own instrument. You know, to have this uh, what we call a one string musical instrument. Yeah, that is called masinko. That you know, it requires a different knowledge. Who can have that? People who lives with herders, with horses, because they use a horse tail, oh. a horse hair for that. Wow. So it's not simply uh, spread out. The Greeks yeah. had horses, and in Greek mythology you'll see that. If we see the archaeological, uh, uh, the archaeological uh, artists in cave art, in you'll see some kind of one string instruments. Yeah. But the origin is always within that, on the other side of the, 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 the Red Sea and on this side of the Red Sea. That was the main trade route between Egypt, the Medi Mediterranean, and, and Ethiopia, so and Sudan. Speaking of you know, the eastern side of the world, do you feel like, do you think anybody reached the New World, like specifically Africans, uh, either whether it's West or East, reached the New World before you know, uh, 1462 or whatever it is, Columbus. Well, is it, if you study or even the, the Vikings. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. If you study the pre, the pre, the pre columbus history, the Atlantic Ocean was crossed many times by Ethiopians, Sudanese, or something, yeah. all the way to uh, Rio de Janeiro, uh, Brazil. Yeah. And you'll see some in the Caribbean, along Cuba uh, and the Caribbean countries. And I believe that uh, it's not Columbus who discovered America. It is Columbus who discovered the potential of America and used the land, good, fertile, with biodiversity. That was the message of uh, Columbus mm -hmm. for his king of Portugal and for the European nations. So. Europeans discovered Africa. It means Europeans discovered the potential, the knowledge of Africa, not the humans. The humans were there before them. Yeah, yeah, of course. So this is the discovery of the importance. If Ethiopians were in Rio de Janeiro uh, in 14th century, they didn't brought out back Hampton, or they didn't form their own colony there. Yeah, the Africans. The, the Africans, yeah. yeah. For example, whereas the Europeans they established their own colony, eh? wow! They, so they fight with the native people. You see, it was a massive immigration. You see, the money owners they just understood uh, the importance of this land. Yeah, it was because a capitalistic pursuit. It, 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 it is an industrial revolution. They yeah. drive them crazy to get a better land. Yeah. So it's 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 not for freedom. It is for money. The rock, uh, you know, the families like J.P. Morgan, Rockefellers, all this moved with the banks of England, with the banks of uh, which is today Germany, mm -hmm. a lot of families of the French. You know, America was formed, uh, occupied by four powers. The British they occupied the mid the mid section with North, which is what America now, not what we call yeah. North America. The French, they occupied the South, where now Quebec, Louisiana, and so on. Yeah. The Spanish, 
they occupied uh, from uh, California all the way to Argentina. Yeah. The Portuguese occupied Brazil. Brazil yeah. yeah. That's how they formed this. So it was purely economic. It was purely, you know, the, what, what, what was the, an American revolution? It's a revolution of the rich people reading of the, the English rich people. <laughs> Giving themselves an opportunity to get rich oh, yes. as well. Yeah, so. that's what it is. So why don't you think, like we said, the Africans definitely, you know, there's strong evidence that they came to the New World before Columbus. Why don't you think they started colonies? Why didn't you think they, they did the same thing that was done with Columbus? Be, 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 because they didn't, they didn't need resources oh. for their... You see, the Americans came to get... The British came to get resources from here. Number one, tobacco. Number two, wood. Yeah. Number three, gas. Fur. Fur. Yeah. Gold. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, gold. That's where they came. Yeah, they yeah, the gold, gold rush. That was yeah. the first. That was the first thing they wanted. Was yeah. gold. Yeah. So the Africans, even though they are before them, they didn't have that need to Africa because Africa had its own gold, its own minerals. So it was more like a friendly diplomatic mission. Uh, it's to just explore. Uh, it's it's just a human discovery. Yeah. People walks to a new life, to a new area, and they may be misdirected, and they ended up in Australia. <laughs> so everything well, is there. Well, Columbus was trying to get to India. So yeah. I have a question. Do you think if Columbus found India, right, instead of North America, yeah. would, he have, would he have done the same thing to India that was done to America? So would they have gone and killed the natives and then made colonies and then exploited the land? Mm, why did uh, they why did they do it in america and not india no 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 you see india was uh three thousand years culture power and so on india became a colony of england by the will of the indians mm -hmm. the indian landlords like the moguls and them I think. yeah they, they became a representative of the british yeah so do you think do you think there's any any land on earth that hasn't been discovered yet, like Columbus, we're talking about Columbus, because we wouldn't know, because at the time of Columbus, Col people thought everything, you know, the world was what it is. Do you think there's like a mysterious well, Atlantis the, somewhere the, the, that we can go and not Atlantis, start but over? Uh, there are a lot of places where we went, uh, very few population. Really? Like where? Yeah, if you go to Polynesia, you see oh, people okay. still living on the branch of a tree. Really? Oh, yes. Wow. You know, in every, uh, uh, do you think that every Ethiopian knew until 30 years ago all Ethiopia? No. Certain parts was a forest hidden, and we never know what number of nationalists and nations there. So who's like the most recent people that you learned about, or people learned about, um, that were in isolation, like a tribe that was in isolation for a long time that people didn't have access to, but are still Ethiopians. Well, the, uh, well country, ca countries are already on the map, on the global map. Yeah. Uh, we know that. We don't have a, any problem of uh, the map. But we don't have an idea what kind of people, 100%, who lives in the extreme North Pole. Yeah. But because seasonally, that changes. Seasonally, they may die yeah. because of the ice sheet. The same thing in the South Pole. We have no enough information about the natives. But there are people. Uh, uh, you see, between, on the Atlantic Ocean, there is a place called Las Palmas, that is an island yeah. between Cuba and... It's a Caribbean like, island. Uh, yeah. Some of them never been occupied by humans. It's oh. a recent occupation, yeah. Wow. So you see, people move when it's needed. Yeah. Until recently, you know, very few people with American Indians live in Dakota, North Dakota, South Dakota. Yeah. Very aside, so, so, uh, so there's possible there's still people who are, un, un, well, who are not exposed yeah. to the rest of the world. So yeah. You probably know there's a, there's a biblical story of a tribe, Gog Magog. Yeah. It's in the Old Testament. And they talk about these, these two tribes and their characteristics, and people are saying that they're hidden tribes. It's the same stories in the Quran, yeah. and, and, and people just talk about it. So as an anthropologist, as a secular anthropologist, do you feel like there's, there's a chance that these people exist, just knowing the state of the world and, and what we know, <laughs> the satellite images and stuff it, like that? It's all an interpretation. 
Yeah. For example, what we call today the Saudi Arabia. Huh? Uh, some said that was where Saddam and Gamara was there. Yeah. Some said that was where the Sinai mountain there. The, the, the Sinai, what we know today, is rewritten. Yeah. By the Jewish. There is this kind of explanation. So there are a lot of mythical stories which you cannot prove by archaeological evidence. Yeah. The only thing is we can use them as an evidence to support some ideas from oral tradition and traditional traditional uh, uh, approaches. Okay, so you just use them as, you try to filter out what's real and what's fake um, as a guide kind of is what I'm, is what I'm getting. Uh, well, uh, do we have a choice? So if, we, if someone says, oh, Mount Sinai is in Egypt, no Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai is in Saudi Arabia. Well, from that we know maybe there was a Mount Sinai that existed. Maybe that's true, but we just don't know where it is. You know, uh, potentially. People talk about, for example, the Ararat Mountain. Uh, like it's in Armenia, Nahri. right? Don't they say? Yeah. That? Everyone thinks that the Ararat, certain Ethiopian historians, they wrote that Ararat was in Ethiopia, but we don't see that mountain. We don't see that. Some say that the Garden of Eden is in Ethiopia, between Ethiopia and Egypt, along the the Nile Valley. Yeah. These are all mythical stories which doesn't have archaeological evidence. But humans, they created a lot of stories from what they live. Religion is about moral, about humanity. Though many inhuman things has been done by religion with the religion leaders around the world, including the crusade, including what's going on in Palestine, including what's going on uh, all these wars, uh, but still they have something uh, mythical uh, messengers. Yeah. Whereas you don't see in Scientology. But if you ask the Scientologist, you'll say that because we have more freedom. Yeah. That's fine. It is your freedom. But I cannot call Saint Tom Cruise <laughs> or Saint John Travolta. <laughs> yeah. It just seems unreal to us, I think. So, as an anthropologist, you understand like the history of religion. What is the earliest known idea of religion? Like, what were the tenets of like the first ever religion to ever emerge on Earth? Well, in every culture, they are all, they have their own religion. So, what and about see, before it's it's Ethiopians? Also, like the well, first Ethiopians, who, we don't, Lucy. We, we don't no, no, we, we, uh, You know, the level of Lucy. What we talk is a human evolution, even. The evidence we have is very limited. Yeah, we have a very limited uh, uh, fossils, but the materials what we found associated with fossils made by uh, the hominids or by human proto humans or humans, uh, the material culture you have, you can figure out something to say. Or if you go to a ca caves in Ethiopia, there are some kind of cave paintings, and you may say that oh this people could have some kind of religion. Yeah, they were but worshiping something. Well, they were worshiping something. In modern ethnography, if you go to Ethiopia in some communities or in Sudan, in the Nuers, the Anyaks, and so on, uh, they don't believe in Christianity, they don't believe in Islam, they don't believe in anything, they believe in their own way. Yeah, uh, nature. Nature, yeah. animism. Yeah. The same same in in uh, the U.S., in, in, on Turtle Rock, as they say. Oh, uh, with the Native American culture. Native Americans, yes. The same concept. The same concept. Humans are, you see, the brain chemistry we have is the same, whether you are from Africa or Asia. But the opportunities and the creativity of human mind differs because of uh, the needs. You see, for Europeans to effort and create fire, create many things for survival is the winter. In Africa, you don't need uh, you, you you don't need a cold house. You you sit under the a beautiful tree. Yeah, yeah. That, that's fine. That's true. Oh, you, yeah. you don't travel in Africa to get uh, snow. You don't need the snow. Yeah. So necessity is one of the factor for progress as well. Right wow. now, if you see the fast growing economies, are the third world countries. They are capturing. You know, you can imagine. Uh, the Dubai I know now it is much better than uh, Manhattan. Yeah, that's what it is. The Addis Ababa I know now it's as large as uh, Manhattan and much 
much my uh, in many ways beautiful architectures yeah or cleaner to, maybe uh, yeah if you go to rwanda in recent years you will see a tra- this is a need yeah you see urbanization is a source of money urbanization is a source of uh, technology uh, urbanization is uh, a share of knowledge yeah so when you are building a town or a city you create everything you create electricity you create electrician you create uh, you build Plumbing, building yeah. you have quantity surveyor structural engineer that engineer this engineer uh, you create a factory you need all kinds of human resources human power so urbanization is one of the factor that create jobs and rapid growth of the world and it helps i was in china if, uh, sorry yeah, i was ahead, in yeah. china a few uh, a couple of years ago the china i know for many years each time it's changing right now in every 100 miles you'll see a new city a new city wow larger like... than manhattan in every 100 miles wow uh, you see the fastest train if you go to china 30 years ago the whole city was bikes and horse carts today the most advanced uh, vehicles are in China. Yeah. The most advanced, uh, the bullet trains in China. They're a cashless society now too. Oh, yeah. they don't use cash. They use everything is electronic. Well, they they do both. To they the most, both. I think both. they're less they're less reliant on cash than the U.S. is. Uh, For example, um, my barber who's from China, she was saying that in China you would pay with if you go to like to a street a street food cart. You pay with Venmo. You don't yeah. pay with cash. They don't accept cash. They say we only take Venmo. They're trying. You see. Yeah, yeah. So it's they're definitely they're evolving more. I yeah, that's one. They're fighting. You see, the tax system. Yeah. The, uh, Underground it economy. Has a purpose, yeah. 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 It's a pur- it has a purpose. Yeah, they want to keep everything. Yeah. So you look at you look at these civilizations and you look at history. What civilization, specifically the U.S., do you think America mirrors the most from history? What great civilization do you think we're most similar to? Well, I mean, America is a composition of all cultures of the world. Yeah. That's what America is. In America, there are all humanities from all over the world. Has it ever happened in history before? No. Yeah. No. This is the first time. The, 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 this is the first time. You, you know, uh, Europeans, they colonized Africa, they colonized Asia, but they never bring people from those countries. This is well, what about South Africa? Uh, South, 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 South Africa is a colony of uh, the, the the white people. Yeah, yeah. The South, you know, the Africaners, they are a deported group from oh. Holland. Why were they deported? Uh? They are they are they are. Are they criminals or something? They are criminals like Australians. Oh, Australians are criminals. A bunch yeah. of criminals with formed that was a uh, that, that was a prison. Yeah. So I I I read a book uh, by Winston Churchill. Uh, it's called. We, the English-speaking people, we, the English-speaking. England and the English-speaking people created the latest, uh, the latest five big economies of the world. Australia, New Zealand. Canada, the U.S. Canada, U.S., and South Africa. Wow. That's how they claim. Yeah. I mean, they're not wrong. Those are the biggest economies. Yeah, that's, I don't know about South Africa, but definitely Canada, the U.S., Australia. Well, South, South, South Africa, South Africa was, uh, they co- uh, had a, a better economy than Portugal, wow. than Spain. Yeah. Wow. That's that's interesting. So you said that's never happened before where you have a, a confluence of uh, no, such no, no. diverse... Uh, you see, uh, America is unique. America, uh, this is ironic when you see American congressmen or senators, they stood on the podium and they say that we bring immigrants because the Americans are not able to work anymore. That they are insulting the population they are bringing. <laughs> yeah, they are. And right? after a year, two, five years, the children of those immigrants will be presidents yeah. or mayors. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you get a punch first when you come to this country. Yeah. But the opportunity in this country is great. And uh, uh, it, you see, America was the country of the communists. Most of the communists 
who undertook the Russian revolutions are lived in America. Oh, but the system wiped out as a communist. System. So the communists from the from Russia moved to the U.S. Yeah, there was a communist movement since since 1887 in Russia. Okay, and the Tsar government was exiled them. Exiled here. them. Yeah, and all of them were here. Even the frontline revolutionaries like Lenin, yeah. he lived in Zurich. Like Trotsky, he lived in New York. Wow, these are the people who undertook the Russian Revolution. Wow, that's so amazing. America yeah, yeah. was a country of uh, uh, immigrants yeah. in politically, because they think that uh, a lot of Europeans immigrated here because of religious persecution by the Roman Catholic Church. A lot of the Americans are Protestants for a long time. The Catholic population is a lot. For example. You take Virginia, although it is the South, it's Catholic. Yeah. You take Maryland, it's no, it is a Protestant. Maryland is Maryland Catholic. Maryland is a Catholic. It's the only that's Catholic. How the, that's that, that's how the settlement was. Yeah. Anyway, uh, gradually, uh, you know, uh, things changed. The reason why it changed is, if they invested a lot of money on African Americans right after the emancipation of uh, slavery. Uh, the, the demand of labor from outside would have been reduced. Yeah. But they created underclass society and they start to import the big time knowledgeable scientists from all over the world, from Asia, from Africa. Yeah. Every graduate in American school will remain here. Usually. So they invested on that. But they would have been well off if they invested in the black community and change their life that's a tragedy you know yeah yeah i i, get, I definitely agree with that um but instead they created a whole apartheid system if you could say like oh yes uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not only black and white in, oh latino La, or, latino has got these the native americans it's on, it's on neighborhood uh, the jewish has got these their neighborhood the irish has got it was impossible to mix and live yeah which it, is ironic because they call it the melting pot, and that was America's whole thing, where we're diverse, everybody come, but then when you come here, you still have to stay in your section. No, no, the melting pot is, you use the same green dollar, that's <laughs> all. You're melting the dollar. We're all buying the same stuff, that's it. Yeah, comparatively, yeah. Yeah. So, I know you studied in Russia to go back to Trotsky and all that, and, and you studied in Moscow, right? No, no, I studied in St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg. I used to work for the Russian Academy of Sciences. Wow. And I did my graduate work there. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Um, so while you were there as an Ethiopian man, do you feel like you are more comfortable as a black man in Russia or as a black man in the U.S.? Because no, you've no, experienced no, it's, both. It's totally different. Russians are the only colorblind, ethnic blind population in the world. Okay, so Ethiopians explain that. Ethiopians are racists among themselves. Yeah. I know a lot of Ethiopian racists. Or America is... Or in Russia, they... Well, this is in the 80s, of course, right? No, 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 no. Any time. Even in, now? In the history. Okay. You see, it's only in Russia you hear about a great poet called Pushkin, mm -hmm. Alexander Pushkin. You know how they describe him? One cell of Pushkin perfected our, our literature because wow. he's the greatest poet. One one cell of the black man that's how they call it yeah. yeah so he was black he was black he's he was black wow and he was a, he's like the shakespeare of of uh, uh russia. russia yeah interesting so how did he get there is he was he uh, well uh from ethiopia he was ethiopian he was ethiopian mm -hmm. uh his father his grandfather he went to turkey with the Ro ottoman empire yeah and peter the great was looking for a black Butler, oh, to like the palace, a, like a soldier, a soldier yeah. and a butler. So they sent him. Ganibal went there. He married to uh, Russian, and Pushkin was born. Oh, so he and, was half Russian, half Ethiopian. Yeah, my, uh, Abraham looks like pretty much Pushkin. When he, <laughs> whenever his his curly head is, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's that's interesting. And you didn't feel like so. I hear so, stories. Uh, look, uh, yeah. the. Here I'm not talking about politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here I'm talking about humanity. The, the average person if, in, in if Russia. I went, I went to Bulgaria, Hungary, uh, Scandinavian countries. You know what happened to me? 
Quoi? In every street, someone, a young black, uh, a young, a young white man would come and say, "Hey, nigger." Wow, really? Yeah. yeah. Do you have? Oh, weed or something. Weed. Oh, wow. <laughs> Do you have? That's how they see you. Yeah. No matter whether you're a doctor, where you, you are a black man. Yeah. To them. In Russia, uh, if you go to Ukraine or Armenia or all these countries, the same thing. Yeah. If you go to Japan, they don't like to see a black man. Yeah. That's the psychology. Yeah. But in Russia, a Russian girl, you date her, she'll go and tell to her parents, oh, I have a beautiful neck. Neck means a black man. Yeah. The parents will host you for a dinner. Wow. That's how they introduce you. They'll take you to their dacha. They'll, this is just a different psychology. Yeah. So... They, they they do that for every human being. Yeah. Whether you are Ethiopian, whether you are Sudanese, whether you are Australian or a white man, human is human to the Russians. Yeah. So Russians are very human in this case. Do you think that comes from the socialist uh, ideals? No, 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 no. Way back to the Christianity, Orthodox, the Orthodox Church. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess. And the, the, the American blacks were supported by the Russians. I remember that. Uh, I read. I watched a documentary about they, that. They, they, they always on the side of the blacks. Yeah. Not only the, the 1970s uprising, you know. They, yeah. they, when Abraham Lincoln uh, emancipated the slaves, two communists wrote to Abraham Lincoln a letter. One is Karl Marcus from Germany, appreciating the freedom of the slaves. The second one is Plehanov from Russia, who appreciated that human dignity is very important. Those are our people. Wow. Those are our people. Orthodox, Christians, this, the, the cradle of civilization. That's how they describe Africa. Yeah. It's not like the British book. Africa is the most dark and savage country. That's how yeah. I learned it when I was a little boy. <laughs> but in Russia, they don't describe that. Yeah, yeah, it's a very different, and yeah, I hear the same because I have uncles who studied, you know, in in, in Moscow or Saint Petersburg, and yeah. and they they describe the same same thing. And uh, you know, a lot of them had Russian girlfriends, and you know, probably some Russian children. Oh, a lot. Yeah, a lot. Alexander, uh, what's his name? Alexander. Alexander. The poet. Pushkin. Pushkin. Yeah. yeah. So so you think this that climate is how someone like Alexander Pushkin was able to become like the Shakespeare of Russia yeah. because of the social climate of Russia compared to there were probably many black people in other parts of Europe but we'll never hear about them because the climate didn't allow them to well, the point is uh, organized organized discrimination was across the board in in Europe yeah no matter who you are if you are black you are out they don't care about you yeah uh, I've been many times traveling in this world in European Europe world. But there is a law that protects you from, you know, there is a, a protection. That's how you survive. Yeah. Uh, you have to know your, your neighborhood everywhere where you are. Yeah. Uh, Which country did you experience the most discrimination in, in Europe? Uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be particular. Yeah. Because I'm pretty much... Uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, a rebel. Yeah. I can confront anything. Uh, the the moment you're, you're they... Indiana, black Indiana Jones, the original, no, 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 original no, no, Indiana no, no, Jones. No, no, no. No. Uh, you, I, I can confront. I can explain. I can argue. But uh, when a policeman calls you a fucking nigger or fucking black, that's that's not. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Because that's the uh, law. That, that, right? that, that, that's the way. I remember in London, I remember in some place like that. Yeah. Oh, the French, the moment you look, they look at you, they just turn their eyes. Oh, après vous, le noir, the black man is behind you, look at you. It's just. Yeah. yeah. And we complain about the small. But me, I complain. deliberately always shake, I always hug them, I always kiss them. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. yeah, changing their, trying to create change yes in a small way in a small way in a small way but uh, literally the world is changing uh, I remember this is the story what I have to tell you 
I was in London once across uh, in Gordon Square across the uh, Big Bang. University of London. Okay. In a pub. The moment I go in, a lady, she runs at me and says, you go out. I said, what? She said, yeah, you go out. You are black. What the hell are you doing here? She said to me. Why? Her son, he said, mom, it's not right. Her husband, honey, what's happening? <laughs> no, no, no. This black he has to go out. She just confronted me. Right. She's just, she's just a, a, a like a customer at the pub, right? She's a customer with her family. Whoa! And the entire uh, population who's drinking there was shut down, and they were looking at me. You know, what I'm gonna do? Yeah. And the hotel, the bar, the restaurant manager was almost calling a police. Calling the police on you or on the lady? Of course, on me. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Public disturbance. Yeah. And I said to her, you don't like black? Yeah, I hate black. So why do you dress black? Look, you dress. Why don't you read of this and be nude? <laughs> why do you dress black? Do you like Michael Jackson? Yes. So why do you, he's black, why do you like him? <laughs> I was humiliating her. Yeah. Finally, she was a little drunk. She was over all over me and she said, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm sorry. I've never met a smart person like you. You really put me on. That's the Johannes magic. Then after that, a big party for me, the entire. The entire pub. <laughs> they tried. Yeah. Because how I handled it. You know, if someone comes and said, oh, look your hand. You see the difference, our difference. They say to me many times yeah. uh, in, the, in the metro or... The, in Ukraine especially, and I said, yes, once, this is what I said, one of the guys was offended. He looked at me and said, you see yourself? I said, yes, sir, yes, yes. Uh, you are black. Oh, yes. And you are white. Yes, yes, I'm white. Then pause. Then he said, you look an ape. Yes, yes, the face is mine, the hair is the ape. <laughs> Your hair is the ape. What? No. The face is mine. The butt is yours. You look like an, a butt of an app, I said to you. <laughs> he was angry. People were listening to us yeah. when we were arguing. Then an elderly woman, she get up and slap him. She was angry. We, this is a foreigner. Why do you do that? Yeah, he's harassing they, somebody for no yeah, reason. Har- he tried to harass me, but he cries finally. I made him crazy. Because I, I accept that I'm an ape because I look like an ape. Yeah. But I told well, even him that, anthropologically, right? Yeah. He, I told him that he has a hair. That's the baboon hair. That's, a, you know, if you take the hair, the blonde and so on. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. Those are the baboons, not the humans. That's... <laughs> the proper humans. Yeah. So this kind of things can be confronted each, each time. But you have to be, uh, just talk to them. Yeah. And they will change. Don't overreact. That's the most important thing. A black man traveling around the world, uh, he shouldn't feel... Uh, first, we have to learn the language. Yeah. The Russians will come and say that. Uh, Negr, would you le- please move? Negr means a black man, please. Is it derogatory? Is it it's like... not. Okay. But for uh, someone who doesn't understand uh, Russian language, it looks like that you nigger, yeah. you go away from me. So you have to you have to know exactly the cultural context. The cultural context. Yeah. Two. As you are surprised to see a white person in your village, they could be surprised to see you in a village of Ukraine or Armenia or anywhere. So you, you shouldn't be hostile. They look hostile, but eventually they'll get used to you if you are peaceful. Yeah. So the most important thing is not to overreact. You know, when we were children in Ethiopia, there were American teachers, peace course, and so on. And our mothers used to say, oh, if you don't eat your dinner, I'll call the white man and he'll eat you. <laughs> <laughs> they used to tell us that. I still tell myself that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they used to tell us that. So uh, those are our teachers. Yeah. Huh? Are you were, were you guys scared of them because they were your teachers or because they were white? Because we're all scared of our teachers well, when we're young. No, 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 because they're white. Because yeah. they, they, 
you see, there are two ways of looking white. Uh, those people, extreme biblical people, they feel that Jesus Christ was white, and if there is a white man, they feel that he's kind, nice, Christian. So he's rel they co they associate him with Jesus. Jesus, yeah. But Jesus wasn't actually white, according uh, to him. It does matter yeah, whether yeah. he was white or this is a religious figure. Yeah. Uh, uh, creating a black Jesus doesn't help. Yeah. Like, uh, creating a black Muhammad doesn't help. What helps is what you believe. You have to build in it. Yeah. And keep for yourself. It is your religion. Yeah. Don't bring to me. I don't have to bring mine. You have to respect someone's beliefs. That's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, you know, that's uh, that's the way the life is. You know. So, you talked about. Oh, we talked about you know the color of Jesus's skin being irrelevant, but if you look at you know ancient Egypt, there's a contested debate, you know specifically online, but even in like some spaces of uh, intellectual thought, of who were the ancient Egyptians? Were they were they black? Were they Semitic people? And I want to ask you as an anthropologist: no, the indigenous people are black. There's no problem of no, Egypt, whether Egypt or Maghreb yeah. countries or any Arab countries, what you see in the north, yeah. this is a black population. Yeah. Yeah. But that was moved later, you know, from East Africa to reach to Egypt, it takes several years to arrive. So the other population came and, uh, and occupied partly as well. You see, from where? Where was it? From, from Europe, from Spain. From, oh. So uh, is that why North Africans are lighter? Uh, because Yeah, mixed up. It's a mixture. So they're actually... So when did the migration from Spain to North Africa happen? In the 13th, 14th century, pretty much. Really? Yeah, even so, a little earlier. So so before, if we went to 600 AD, the, the entire population of North Africa was black? Uh, probably it was not, uh, it was not populated. Uh, you see, the Sahara Desert was forced. It yeah. was a thick force from the east to the west. Yeah. That the more the forest is, yeah, the more the more the people moved from the north to the south. The air, actually, the, it's I think it's written that the tribe, Banu Hilal, they're called Banu Hilal. Yeah, they, yeah. they came from Arabia. Yeah, and they so, so the Arabian people they came after the rise of Islam by large. Yeah, you see, that was the caliphates who ride all over to Eastern Europe, uh, to the Balkan countries. Yeah, to the Southern Europe, you know. A part, a, a part of the Spain population is mixed up with the Arabs. A part of the Italians. Even their last Muslim. names. I meet people from oh, yeah. who are Latino who have Muslim last names, but they're not Muslim. Yeah. 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 That that, that happened, but uh, uh, there shouldn't be uh, particular particular color that represents the human being. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for example, if you if you study the. Uh, the history of the Japanese population. The Japanese were very short and yellow and dark hair. Yeah. That, since the, the 18th century, with the new introduction of food, they start to eat meat, they, eat, uh, they start to grow. Oh. In 1900, the average Japanese was about a meter and a half high. Now they are growing and they are getting tall and they're, uh, you know, the, the face, the kind of eat, food they eat, they have a large jaw, my, my zygomatic arc. Yeah. Right now, they, they, they eat light food and you don't see massive jaw, even in many humans. Yeah. Yeah. So the diet changes everything, even the frame of your, your, your face. Over a span of a hundred years. Yeah. Wow. So. So, so they weren't eating anything before, or like were they eating just like uh, like the rice and the, the protein they have is they are more dependent on uh, marine marine products, or like fish and like fish and yeah. so on. Uh, uh, apart from that, uh, their rice culture is going back to eight hundred, a thousand, two thousand years. Mm -hmm. uh, they have their own way of life, their own way of everything is very much economized in their lifestyle as early as early period. Yeah. So that classified uh, class uh, of people with the new industrial revolution, they did get mutton. But later in the 1900, with the occupation of America, with the introduction of America to Japan, uh, they start to be one of the leading 
uh, technology people. Yeah, to this day. Uh, yeah, in 1900, uh, when the Wright brothers started an airplane here, Japan already created an airplane as well. Oh. In First World War, Japan fought with an airplane. Wow, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. So, so then, yeah. why did the Wright brothers get the, the credit for? No, it? no, no. The Wright brothers. Uh, you see, they created the. You see, the Wright brothers. They created an airplane. They, 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 they just created, and they showed to the military. Okay. So the Italian military, the British military, they look at it and they feel that it would be a good war, war toy. Yeah. So Ross and Royce invested on that and the first airplane proper airplane was made in england by Rolls royce at the same time in america wow so that's interesting so uh, you know those guys they just show a flying object and they trained some italian pilots some uh, british pilots how to fly once those guys know how to fly uh, ford motors and others Rolls royce these are the first uh, like companies, airplane companies, yeah, uh, yeah, they start to build the car, the, the motors. Wow, that's interesting. We don't really include, and Japan's really like an anomaly, anomaly in Asia, because it's in Asia, but it's also, you know, not to say that, um, you know, compared to their neighbors, they're they're very advanced. Is what I'm trying to say. No, uh, uh, I don't know why the, Japan. What the, what the, happened in Japan that that instigated this? Was it the war, World War Two or was it World War One? World War One. Yeah, they, they became part of the war industry. Oh, okay. And war is the creator of a lot of inventions. Invention, yeah. So uh, they fine. fought with Russia in 1902, the Russian uh, Japan War. Uh, that was one of uh, the issue. Uh, what were they fighting? Was it land they were fighting? Land, on? yeah. In in like northern China or something. No, no, Japan, northern Japan. Oh, it was an island? No, yeah, the Sahalin, Kurin Islands, and so on. Oh. So the Japanese won the war. Then eventually, during World War II, the Russians, they took back a big chunk of the islands to Russia. Wow, until, to this day? Until this day, there is no peace pact between Russia and, and Japan, except they are talking each other. Wow, because the islands, are these inhabited islands? Yeah. So the, so the citizens of those islands are ethnically Japanese, ethnically Japanese, but nationalistically they're Russian. Russians, yeah. And do they claim the Russian identity? But they don't have any choice. Wow. If they don't, they can't live. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. That's why there's Russians who look more East Asian, I guess. Oh, yes, there are yeah. a lot of Asian, Asian type of... Uh, you see, Russia is half Europe and half Asia. Yeah. There is a mountain called the Ural Mountain that cross the whole belt from the south uh, Kazakhstan all the way up to the North Pole. Yeah. So the east part is Asia, the west part is Europe. So it depends on which side of yeah. the Europe. But I heard it's all well, in the well, same... No, no. The west side is Europe. Okay. The west side, what we call Moscow, so part of... Siberia. Who decided that? Because I know we decide Our. continents, but we decide the continents by the the tectonic plates they're on. So there's the Africa plate, there's the Australian plate, I believe. Yeah, the, 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 well, but there's the, no plate, the same plate for Asia and... and uh, no, there is. There's a separate plate? There is a separate there's plate. There's a Europe plate? Yeah, there's a separate... If you, if you see on the European side, the Arctic, from the Arctic all the way down to Russia, Murmansk, uh, Tromsø, all the way down to uh, Denmark. Yeah. Eh? You get the plate that okay. is not still divided. Still, you see, under the ocean, a land connection. That's what they are fighting right now with Alaska as well. Yeah. Uh, the same thing in Asia, there is a plate. Uh, it's far, but they don't want to discover it. They don't want to do, invest a lot of money on it they, because they occupied the land and they occupied their backyard, sea or ocean. Oh, so that's how you own it. I heard that. I heard that. Um, the, you know, the Great Rift Valley in, in Africa. 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 So in a couple of years, Ethiopia is going to be connected to like Yemen, or no, no, no. Ethiopia, Ethiopia was connected to Yemen once upon a time. I think it's going to go back though. They're saying no, 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 no. Is that one to go back? In fact, is it going to separate from Africa? Uh, no, in fact, either Ethiopia, part of Ethiopia will be part of the Red Sea. Part of the land will be wiped out, probably like Djibouti and so on. 
Oh, where, so and it's just going to disappear? Uh, it may disappear, and Ethiopia will have Red Sea access once again on the Indian <laughs> Ocean. <laughs> How long is that going to take? Uh, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> it's a secret. That's, secret that, costs, that costs a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Because I, I, I realize that Ethiopia is a landlocked country. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you do? Is there any anything archaeologically a, a country can do? Or, or construct? I'm not archaeological, but with terms of construction to get ac ac access to the sea without moving its borders. Like, could they, like, create some sort of... Sort of I'm well, they, 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 it's all about technology and knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and necessity. You know, the amount of money invested in something should, should be... You have to be right. You have to be... You have to you, you have to be sure that you'll have a profit out of it. Yeah. If if you may invest billions of dollars and make an underground tunnel, although it's the Red Sea, it's a possibility. Yeah, it is. Then after that, what? How much traffic? How much money? How much maintenance? Maintenance. Yeah. Everything is you know. So it's easier. To, you know, Djibouti is a part of Ethiopia. Now it's an independent country. Yeah. Or Somalia was a part of Ethiopia. Now it's an independent country. Yeah. Yeah. So when did when did they get independence from Ethiopia? From from not the, not the Italians, but when? No, no, no. When no. did Ethiopia during Aksum, right? Ethiopia never been colonized by any power in history. Uh, what about Somalia has been uh, colonized? No, no, by no. no. Italians. Somalia was not colonized later by the British, by the French. You know? Yeah. But uh, it's never been as as part of Ethiopia. It's never been colonized by the Greeks or by the Romans. Did they try? Uh, no. What the Ottomans did was yeah. they influenced the religion, yeah. Islam. So Ethiopia is the first Islam country in the world. Yeah. Uh, the first mosque it was built in Ethiopia. Yeah. Was built in Ethiopia, the Nagasi Nagash Mosque. So there is in the Quran that that denies any jihad against Ethiopia. So the Ottomans they were not able to fight direct to the Ethiopian government directly. Yeah. Or other, you know, there was no jihad undertook in Ethiopia. Yeah, I think it might be in the Hadith or something. There's so, there's something regarding, like, I don't know for sure, but, like, the Ethiopian king as, like, a, a pious um, figure. The, the, the Not the specific king, but, like, the the kingdom. I guess yeah. you could say the kingdom. And it's, it's the same kingdom since Solomon, right? Well, yeah, that's the oldest kingdom. Yeah. The oldest. So is that why Kaylee Selassie looks a little light-skinned? Is it because he no, descends no, no, from... No, no, no. no. <laughs> is he because he's like the, Semitic the, or... Uh, if you see my sisters, they are much lighter than uh, Haley Yeah, so what is that? What is the reason? Is there a reason for that? Is, is there yeah, some the, mixing? The mixture with oh. the Arabs, the mixture with the Turkish. The so... Mixture. There are a lot of mixtures. That's, so where the Arabs... And the weather. Yeah, the weather as well. Yeah. It's cooler in Ethiopia. It's cooler. It's highland. Yeah. Yeah. So was the mixture with pre-Islamic Arabs, I assume, Christian oh, Arabs, probably. Yes. Yeah. Well, even way back. Yeah. You know, humans are from Ethiopia. Yeah, originally. So you can, you can never claim that a certain group of people with their color of skin. You know, in Ethiopia, there are all colors. Yeah. The darkest human being now in the world is from Ethiopia. You know that? Yeah. The darkest. In Gambella, right? In Gambella, we have in uh, the in the other parts in yeah. the south we have. Those are if there is Ethiopia proper, those are the sender dentary people who can be claimed Ethiopians. Yeah, so they're the, the most original. Are, the rest of us are uh, a product of migration, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, see, Ethiopia was a state, always a state, always a government. Therefore. We had a lot of trade with the Greeks, with the Romans, with the Ottomans, everything. So uh, that's that's how you you get a lang mixed language. You see, Semitic language. What's a Semitic language? What's a, a Kushitic language? It's yeah. not one language. It's a mixture of Afro-Asiatic. Eh? It has some elements of Arabic. It has some elements of uh, Asian language. It has so. That's why you say Salam, right? Salam, yeah. 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 Salam and. Yeah. All those that that's interesting, yeah. but um, yeah, you didn't uh, you didn't answer my question though. I wanted to ask you: Was King Tut African, or not? Not that is he? Was he? Would you? If King Tut came today in person, this is the last question I'm gonna ask you: If King Tut came today in person, would he be considered black by our standards socially? Oh yeah, yeah. He's an African. Yeah, you wouldn't have any doubt about it. No. Okay, so when we see like movies and stuff where. It, 
the actors are like yeah that's, that's simply fiction yeah yeah that's a fiction they just want to make sure that there is uh, the how do you call it? the hand mark of the European cinema civilization of the world that's how the Hollywood is doing it yeah so it's, 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 it's an propaganda ego. it is an ego of the white definitely yeah. well I think we can end it here I think we had a good session all right and this uh, is the beginning this is only the beginning we're gonna have yeah. you back and uh, Dr. Johannes is again an esteemed intellectual he has his own podcast as well on YouTube um, if you want to shout it out you guys can check it out I'll link it as well yeah. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to have you back. I'm yeah. enlightened. I feel like my head is heavier with knowledge. Next time we'll, we'll, we'll have structured analysis on topics, one topic, one I think major topic. You give me another. the topics and we'll, we'll analyze yeah, them. We'll, we'll do that. I'm down. I'm down. Perfect. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, thank for listening. You. Have a good day. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. <laughs>